in ancient Jewish wisdom, it says that the manna would be to them whatever they wanted it to be. In other words, if, if they wanted carne asada, it would taste like carne asada. If, if they wanted to be a pizza, it would taste like a pizza. It would meet their need. And you say, well, that's crazy. It's not crazy. It's found in the Bible. That God will be to us all and everything that we need Him to be. That He will meet the desires of our heart. Jesus said, I am the bread of heaven. This was the, the, the shadow of the things to come. And Jesus it is to us all and everything that we need to be. And so there were those um, at that time when the Israelites were out in the desert, there were some that began to believe God. There are some, there are some that didn't have to go through a lot of the stuff that they went through, although they were still in the desert, they began to believe God. They began to worship Him as the one true God. You'll find you find that if you meet some Jewish people, that they will not go. They will ask you, are you Jesus only? Do you go to a Jesus only church? They will not come and preach in a Jesus only church because we serve the Lord in the form of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now they don't identify God <clears throat> as a trinity such as we do. But he, the Lord God is one. And I, I, I talked to a Jewish rabbi not too long ago and we were sharing some things, and he said, the Lord gave me the revelation of the one true God in three persons. He said, I am a man, I am a husband, and I am a father. I am one. And he, and he, and he said, that's how God showed me, gave me understanding of the Lord is one true God. It's very important. It's very important. And the Lord directs uh, their thinking and many ways this way. And so over the years, we take a look at the history of, of Israel. We certainly don't have time to do all that, you know, in this form. It would take a long time for anybody to get through it. But we also notice that there are a number of things that God was dealing with them about. He wanted them to listen and to obey. Simple instructions. These were simple. These, these were kindergarten instructions. God was beginning to teach them His ways, teach them about His love. Like I said, He didn't He 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 didn't react or respond to the murmurings of the Israelites. He saw their need, and as they began to recognize their need, and they turned to Him, Moses turned to Him in prayer, and God would reveal to him the the way that He would provide. For each and every need, whether it was the water, whether it was whether it was the manna, it was the time of the Sabbath <clears throat> for the family time, and they had already heard the voice of God <clears throat> in the sense of hearing hearing about the Ten Commandments. And if you stop and think about the Ten Commandments, it's loving and serving and honoring God and loving people. That's what they're all about. And so when He's saying when he refers to the law, that's what he's referring to. The law of Moses. What we know is the law of Moses. Oh. <coughs> so I want you to understand that God does not test us when you know, we mess up. He doesn't punish us. In our day, in our time, Jesus took all of us. Now we can get out from underneath the blessing of God. And things can happen. But here he's showing them, if you will love me, you will honor me, you will hear and hearken unto my voice, you will be blessed. And he blessed them, but he tested us through the blessing. He didn't test us or test them through hardship, through difficulty, through sickness, through disease. The test came from the blessing that if they would do, if they would hear and do what he says, and they will turn and they will honor him and bless him, it takes all the pressure off. I'm, I don't know about you folks, 
But I know in my own life, I had, I would get under a lot of pressure. Because, you know, we all need to be blessed of God. We all need to experience His blessing. <coughs> we need a, a real tangible relationship with God. And, you know, sometimes when it would come to, you know, to health or, you know, financial provision, I man, you know, I learned a certain amount of things about, you know, great eating or good eating, you know, as I grew up. Um, I know a little bit about, you know, finances and investments, but I'm no expert on it. And I thought, you know, if if I'm going to really be blessed by God, I really need to know my stuff. I really need to know more about, you know, the stock market, you know, about, you know, this and that, and, and it would... I would put a lot of pressure on myself because I didn't feel that I, say, was worthy enough or prepared enough or understood enough to really make a go of it. I thought, man, if, you know, if God were to really bless me, I'd probably lose it off the stock market or something because I didn't know what I was doing. But, you know, when I began to see this, God began to set me free. I began to see his love. You know, he said, he talked to Abraham that you are blessed to be a blessing. We have been born again <coughs> by grace through faith. We've received the grace of God. We are to give grace away. When we receive a financial blessing, the test is, will we bless someone else? Will we give it away? Amen. That way, we stay in line with the flow and the blessing. The blessing of God and when we turn and we come back to Him, not only with our say with our tithes and our offerings, but with a thankful heart. Yes. With a heart that will reverence God and honor God. And in the in this in this manner principle, I begin to see it in verse four that He gave us bread, told us to go out and gather a day's portion, to do, to meet our need. God will meet our need. That's how it starts, but that's not how it ends. And he said, and, and he said that I may test them whether they walk, will walk in my law to honor me, to love people, which is, you know, a Reader's Digest version of, of the Ten Commandments. And the test is, is of our faithfulness. <coughs> the test is whether we will pass on the blessing. Remember, these are these are Abraham's seed. Right? <coughs> Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They they knew to some extent what it was about with Abraham that he was blessed to be a blessing. And it doesn't it doesn't mean wait till you're super duper multi quadrillionaire and then maybe you can pass a little bread on to someone. It means that to bless according to how you have been blessed by the Lord. Amen? Sometime down the road, let's go to uh, Numbers. Chapter 11. <clears throat> now remember, God is working on their perception. Our perception of God Right or wrong will determine our the measure and the level of how we experience Him, how much of His presence that we experience, how much of the blessing of God that we experience, whether we're healed in our bodies or not, whether our families are together. All of it depends on our perception. And that's the first thing God dealt with them. You know, they thought, oh great, God brought us out here. You know, so we can all die of starvation. They mumbled and they grumbled. And over a period of time, the thing that, that they did experience as a blessing was the manna from heaven. Remember, it was wine. It was like a wafer with honey on it. Sweet. Yummy. Like eating a bowl of ice cream. <sighs> I'm sure there was more nutrition than that. <laughs> so over a period of time, still, God was working on them. God was... God remained with them. God was working with them, trying to change their perception. 
and he showed them my miracles all through these years. More miracles and more miracles and more miracles, but miracles will not determine faithfulness. Amen? Miracles are wonderful. Praise God for them. But they will not build into us what we need to be faithful. Thankfulness, gratefulness of worship before God is what will determine our faith in us. So as we, as we look and see in, in Numbers chapter 11, and let's go down to verse 6. Now this is after they've been eating manna for a while. They've been out here, you know, they've been trying to get this thing. And over the years, God is weeding out the unbelief, generation after generation. And, it says, and, and they say, but now our soul, our strength is dried up. There's nothing at all in the way of food to be seen but this manna. They lost that ability to believe God, that that manna would be to them what they needed it to be. And the manna was like the coriander seed in its appearance, and it was and it was like the, the bel, uh, bedellium, which is actually a different color. It's not white. It, it, it's a color that's kind of like an amber color. And it says, and the people went about and they gathered it, and, and then they began to, to put it in mills, they began to beat it with mortars, they boiled it, you know, they tried doing everything they could. How many times have we tried to do everything that we can to receive what we need from God? And here, also, you know, it's not white anymore, and now it tastes like cakes with fresh oil on it. Anybody ever had a cake with oil on it? Nasty, exactly. And it became nasty to them. And so over the years, God was still dealing with them and dealing with them and dealing with them. So finally, in Deuteronomy, turn with me if you will, Deuteronomy uh, chapter, chapter 6, they're getting ready to go over into the promised land. The generations of unbelief have been weeded out over the years. People began to say, maybe, you know, maybe we are, maybe we are, maybe God tells us, you know, maybe God knows a little more. And, and over the years, they began to, to learn to trust God. They began to have a different frame of mind, a different perception. And, and, and in chapter 6, here God's getting ready to take them over into the promised land. And the whole first half of the chapter, it talks about the fact that, that they can reverence and fear the Lord and talking about passing on that, that reverence and fear for the Lord with their sons and their sons' sons and, and that they would keep all the statutes and the commandments which God has taught them over all of these years and that you, their life may be prolonged, that they may, they, they may come into all that God has had for them. Remember, he's the one that said, I am... He showed himself as Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that healed him during, during all of those years. He showed himself as Jehovah Jireh. He showed them, you keep my covenant. He said, I am the, one, I am the God who gives you the power to get well. Yes, I, mean, I am. And he began to teach them year after year after year. And it says in verse 3, Hear therefore, O Israel, and be watchful to do them, that it may be well with you, and that that you may increase exceedingly as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised in the land flowing with milk and honey. In verse 5, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, and your heart, and with all your being, with all your mind. And he begins to encourage him over and over and over to bind, bind the, the word as a sign in their hands of the and on their foreheads. And then down in, in verse 10, it talks about when the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you. Not because you're smart enough. Not because you're holy and religious enough. Not because you know how to build a house. But he says here that the Lord your God will give you with great and goodly cities, not just a house, but cities, which you did not build, and houses full of all goodly things which you did not fill, and wells that you didn't dig, and vineyards and olive trees 
which you didn't plan. And when you eat, 